Generic greetings! Inquisitors in 40k lore tend to be quite a single-minded bunch. Most of them are psychopathic killing machines that go around and murder everything because, you know, innocence is no excuse and all of that. But the ones that aren't just murdering monsters and machines tend to be quite interesting three-dimensional fleshed-out characters. In fact, have several books devoted to them. Inquisitor Gregor Eisenhorn is no exception. He originally appeared in the Inquisitor tabletop game and it's something I've still got the rulebook and models for. Not a bad game, but not really like any other games workshop game that I'd played before or since and that was then followed up by a series of three books by Dan Abnett, Xenos, Malleus and Hereticus and there's also a couple of short stories and there's some other trilogies after that which is based on one of his apprentices called uh, Ravna. I've read both trilogies and I think there's a third one coming as well. I think the first book or second book's already out which is essentially them versing each other but spoiler alert and all that I don't really want to go too much into it but essentially I like reading about Inquisitors. I like 40k law. I like uh, Inquisitors especially because they can be interesting and they essentially go around to anywhere they want and have interesting adventures which is cool and obviously 40k as well so there's a lot of bolt gun and power sword action when I heard that there was going to be a, uh, a game based on Inquisitors, I thought, oh, this is going to be fairly cool. And also, when I found out it was going to be Eisenhorn and uh, especially the first book, Xenos, I thought, even better. So we're going to experience a really good story that's, you know, I, I know and uh, quite enjoy. I've read a couple of times the uh, the trilogy of it, uh, the Eisenhorn trilogy. And I thought, this could be good. This could be told very well. But... Um, this gives me a little bit of an issue because I want to get the summary out of the way now. So, matter of full disclosure, I've played this game for about an hour and a half, the first four chapters, so this is certainly first impressions. And I I want to obviously say spoiler alert from here on in because this is going to go through Hunting the story of it and it is, you know, essentially just you going through the, the, the first book. And that's quite bad because... I think that's the only decent thing here. That sounds like a really damning thing to say, and it's not strictly true. The game is okay. It's mediocre at best. There's a lot of issues in places. It um, doesn't look overly great, even though it's um, Unreal Engine 4, I believe. Uh, it does seem to nail the look and feel of it. The sound's okay in places and absolutely horrible in others. Music's not bad, but I think it's ripped off other 40k games. I'm sure I've heard it before. Um, voice acting for Inquisitor Eyes horn is good because it's marked strong but the rest is hit and miss and the combat is uh, not bad it's the combat in fact a lot of the game that I've played in fact all of the game I've played is essentially like playing the Batman Arkham games just not as well done essentially it is if you can tell it's been done on a bit of a budget but um, does that make it bad well uh, yeah actually in, in a lot of places but um, still might be good for some people which is why I'm just going to show you a bit of it and then you can decide for yourself but if you are just wanting to experience the story and don't really care about the game then by all means get the book if you just want to play about if you just care about the Stay gameplay back. and whether or not it's amazing or not well it's not amazing and i think you know you have to take it all as a full package and it might be okay for some that's as fair as i can really say to be honest with you i can't say it's garbage but then again i can't really say that um you know it's uh, uh fantastic either also as i said i think the uh, the actual story will carry this a lot and I'm a bit of a fanboy when it comes to Inquisitors, so anything I can get my hands on, really, yeah. So uh, there's, there is some probably bias stuff there as well. So anyway, I'm going to show you a bit of it, and then you know you can decide for yourself. So we're going to wander down this corridor, and you'll be finding that I'll be saying that a lot, because, especially at this point, it is just wandering around corridors. That is very, very dark. The whole game is bloody dark. That is the Inquisitor. That is Inquisitor Eisenhorn in his early form. Uh, I believe we will eventually see him in his end form as well. Hopefully, they will do all three books, but I assume that that'll only happen if this makes money. So a lot of the gameplay is you wandering around scanning things with your R specs. So we can bring our R specs up and we can sort of mouse over things like that and then you hack into it and then you see like sort of turn turn on consoles or find out information, things like that. There's a fair amount of cutscenes, there's some quick time events and the combat is not bad and the combat's okay. It's um you get to points where you go, oh, this is going to be a good combat, and then you realise you can just pretty much spam at them, and then some combats that you just die because of reasons, which we might get to uh, later on if we actually get that far in the combat. Anyway, so Eisenhorn has just sent someone off because, you know, he obviously wants them to be killed because that's how stories go. As I said, uh, this is spoiler alert and all of that. Right, I'm going to walk up to this data slate and have a bit of a read, and you can just essentially go down and see, oh, look, cryo systems, and one of them is, oh, unknown error, what's happening? And, uh, yeah, there is a story that goes all with this. I'm going to try and not spoil most of it. Oh, by the way, that sort of weird shonkiness there on his, on his cloak, that's only happened when I'm recording, so... It doesn't seem to be an issue when I'm not doing that. I think it's something to do with the frame sinks and the physics. Let's just open up this door. 
and we will have a wander around. This is like the tutorial type stages, so you know, don't like think, oh, are we just going to be doing this? Excited. But um, there seems to be a fair bit of wandering around corridors, but I'm just going to be going down ladders. Animations and stuff can be interesting. Um, going down and up ladders is, yeah, a bit dodgy. Walking's not too bad, but turning, yeah. You can tell it's a bit of a budget title. Here we get a bit of a quick time event to shove a power sword in, and then it sort of, for some reason, really shakes about for some reason. I've, I watch this, hang on. This bit here. See, the sword just sort of goes, blah, 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 and sort of shakes all over the place. I don't know why that is. Anyway, we'll open that door, and then we'll wander around. By the way, today's uh, beverage is a nice cup of tea. A great cup of tea for killing heretics. So... I want to head into like some sort of crypto area here, I think, which looks really, really nice as well. Oh, yes. Now that's 40k. That's grim. That's dark. That's gothic. That's how it's supposed to be. Really big, sort of mausoleum-y type things. We'll get our scanning uh, device up, and then we can start scanning away. And it gives us information about the character, about the person that's in there and stuff. I think there's another one over there. Uh, no, there isn't one over there. Right, look at that. Nice shadow as well of the Imperial Eagle. Very nice from over there. Yes, uh, attention to detail. Right, so I think now what we have to do is um, actually try to kill some people who are apparently the sort of stealthiest guys in the world because that guy managed to sneak on him really quickly and he slowly turns his head and then that guy appears. <laughs> I don't know how he managed to... Um, I don't know whether he's supposed to have shocked him, like surprised him, but because if you see the first scene, he sort of looks looks over there as if he's seen him, turns around, but when he turns back, then when he turns back around again, he's he's surprised. So I don't know what the deal is. So either way, we've got a power sword, and these guys have got crappy mauls. So. We've got a health on the top, obviously you get to zero, we die. You can press space and do a little roll, and as I said, the combat is pretty much like the Batman game. So when they come at us and you get the thing above the head, you can press left click to counter, and then when they're not doing that, you can pretty much left click and spam the absolute crap out of it, and then take him out, and then later on, you will get some more... Oh, nice little death animation there. You will get, um... Uh, later on, you will get, like, um... Oh, good grief, I chopped his arm off. Uh, you get different, um, options, like you can... Uh, I think it's called... What's it called? It's not a slow-mo thing. You essentially go like into a concentration mode where you can focus on someone and do like a like a really quick attack. These are all like um, sort of stasis pod type things, and I really need to keep scanning. Uh, there it is, and we know that this is uh, Palsidius Orban or Tomb Zero Three Zero Four One, male, age twenty-two. I've just realised that there, is there a forty k? mod for prison architect and if there's not then why not and if there is why i've not heard about it before right some guys need to get the crap kicked out of them so here we go this is inquisitor as known at his best when he's young uh, again spoiler alert here later on um, he's pretty much a monster because he's got loads of more psychic powers and stuff but he can hardly walk because of reasons right and uh, we're gonna go and chop through him uh yeah they're all dead and apparently some of the bo bodies disappear oh there you go they've disappeared Apparently that uh, person is shouting Eisenhorn, 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 and I don't know why. Let me just get the scanner up. Scanner, 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 and hacked. More information, don't really care. Right, so back through doors, and we need to start jumping around here. So this is where we sort of go up and down and around. Come on, can I not go through here? Yes, and then down. I say it doesn't look too bad. Um, it just is, has some like sort of rough edges. A lot of rough edges, actually, but either way, back up here. And we're just climbing around. Oh, oh we need to jump. And hoot, hoot. <laughs> and then we'll go up here. And we can see above. Hang on, do you see that? You can see above that. Don't know if that's supposed to be like that or not. Hmm. Now then. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Um, I, I would care about her if, um, you know, we'd spent more than about two minutes in game. Uh, I All think... I can't I remember, does the first book flesh that out a little bit more? I think there was a short story devoted to her, but I'm not but entirely sure. The last time I read the Eisenhorn books was about three years ago. Pain, fear, but I uh, read it about ten years ago, or not, probably before. probably five years ago, and then, career, and then a couple of years ago as well. It's a quite good book, Stan Abnett um, does a lot of uh, 40k stuff, in fact, he's probably, well, probably so most of what he's ever done, I think, although I could be wrong about that, I don't really know much about the guy, other than he does a lot of books, he's done Gaunt's Ghost and stuff like that. Um, a friend always jokes that um, essentially you can take everything, if you take a lot of what he's done, um, like for the, especially the Gaunt's Ghost uh, and some of the later ones, you take things like Las Gun, Bolt Gun, things like that out and put in things like M16, um, you know, Saw, whatever, <laughs> then you can pretty much just get a modern war novel, <laughs> I made a promise to myself. <laughs> which um, I guess is I sort of correct. Ooh, that's some dodgy sort of cloak physics there. 
And obviously this guy's now uh, a bit pissed off, so I'm going to start shooting my gun. Which is a stub gun, which is actually not great. But we can just keep walking towards them, and now we're out of bullets. So we're just going to have to chop these guys up. Ow! Ow, we're actually getting shot to pieces. This is one of the problems I find with the, the guys that actually have guns. They can, um, they can hit you quite badly, especially when you're trying to, um, you know chop people up and one of the really bad things is if you're in melee with like loads of other people uh, they can happily shoot through them all it's there's not there's no like uh, as far as I can tell simulation of bullet physics it's just like you know you will get shot and that hurts so let's just continue going this way I think we're gonna meet the main big bad boss now and obviously we hate him because of oh hang on there might be some more things to check here uh, there we go yeah we obviously hate him because he's killed um, our our person that we really didn't care about to start off with you really need contacts in that don't you open up Oh, we're going to use um, really, really... <laughs> Apparently this is this power sword so powerful it can uh, pretty much shake... Oh, look at that, it's shaking around itself. It's so powerful you can't even hold on to the thing. Now, these are all red because um, it, the whole thing's failing, which is not great. And here's the big bad boss with um, mediocre voice acting. I'm not saying I can do any better, but, uh, you know. Is that you? Is that you? Aye, laddie! <laughs> all right, let's get around the corner here. Dead, you know, Gregor. Mm. Dead like they all are. Right. Step out and make it quick. Ooh, psychic powers. He was good. I'll give him that. Mm-hmm. My legs actually twitched, almost starting to walk me clear of cover. Yeah, into uh, Gregor Eisenhorn is a quite powerful psychic, and I think he gets more powerful later on because of, again, reasons that don't want to spoil. And How his uh, apprentice, uh, Ravner, is even be. better, I think. It depends on which but books you start reading and which one, what order. But anyway, we've got a honk and space cannon that Show sounds like a potato first. gun. But either way, uh, what we're going to do is uh, pretty much chop these guys up. So bang, 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 and we'll get rid of these guys. And then we can... Can you roll through them? Yeah, you can roll through them. And quickly roll out the way. And I want to go for the guys with the guns first, because as I said, they are pretty... They really hurt you. Ow, ow, it's starting to hurt. Ah! Can't really see what's happening. I'm going to start shooting. There you go. I'm pretty sure I just shot that guy's arm off. Now he's gone as well. Yeah, that worked out. Excellent. You are quite powerful, which you would expect to be being an Inquisitor. Don't know what this guy's doing here with all of these crates. Maybe there's like 40k Mars bars in it. Probably still tastes the same. Uh, this is the uh, part where we can actually change weapons, so I'll show you some of the stuff. You've got some statistics and stuff, and which I won't go through because, well, you probably don't care. And then we've got, uh, well, the, 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 the statistics you do care about, like damage on weapons. So the, currently we've got uh, this uh, power sword here. We've also got a power sword and a thunder hammer, which is cool. And then we've got a uh, health teeth chain sword. And then you've got more advanced ones as well. So, uh, yeah, power swords, more power swords, master crafted, stuff like that, which is cool. Costs credits, you pick up thrones as you go. Same for the gun. you got a ball pistol. A shotgun, useful. Plasma gun, a las pistol, uh, plasma pistol, and stub pistol. I'm pretty sure he uses. Does he use? Um, I think he uses a las pistol for a lot of his work. There you go. And I think he gets a force staff later on. Right. So what we need to do is follow that guy. So this is another chase scene, which I will stop because I want to scan all of these. I don't know why. It just tells you more about them and what's actually happening, but uh, gives you a bit of context. It doesn't really seem fair. Oh, we're getting into the cutscene. It doesn't really seem fair for us to chase after this guy, you know, hell for leather, and then just stop and go, I am now going to scan things. And, um, yeah, this is the cliched section where we have to crouch and go underneath uh, vents and stuff. I don't know if you can actually die by just wandering through them. I haven't actually tried, I must confess. Ow, that actually hurts. What I don't like is when you get hit by the things, ow, you sort of stumble back, which essentially you, you can end up getting uh, almost stun-locked. In previous locations, let me. I'm, I'm pressing the button. That's scan. So we need to follow this guy, and it would be really, really good if you, you kept your momentum. Me. But as you can see, when you get up to this and you press your mash space, you sort of stop and then do a jump, and then we fall off, and then you know we have to mash left click because of quick time events and stuff, and then we'll charge up top. And apparently that guy disappeared because he doesn't need to go through that door. And I think this is where we get the. Is it mines or something? No, no, no. They're frigid bodies these? Sore with hibernation sickness. Yeah, um, oh, this is what we have to do. We have to turn this vent here. And we'll turn it away. I did Rrr, there we are. Custodians. Job done. Apparently, relief crews were on their way. The, uh, the narration from Eisenhorn is, I think, it's really good. I do like it. Um, because otherwise, you wouldn't really. You're not going to be able to get the story, certainly, from what's going on in the. On the map, that's for sure. Right, let's go. Let's have a look at this, and we'll get some coins. Right. So you just head this way. 
And finally, see if we can find the bloke who we've been chasing all this time. I keep on pressing the wrong button to actually get hold of the... Uh, <laughs> instead of opening the door, I always just get the all specs out. It's like I'm scanning every door. It's like, is he here? Oh, uh, we don't know. Right. Climb up ladders and then jump over here. And we're getting shot at, by the way. I don't know if you need the bullets. Yeah, there we go. Got you, bull bullets now and again. You're only stretching this out, I clone. Mm -hmm. And we know we're going to go. Oh, there we are. Come on, lift up. And there we go. Because we're going to kill this guy. Because he's a bad guy. And we're the good guys. Well, we're not the good guys. And actually, I'm, I'm glad that they didn't sort of... No, oh, there we go. We've got these, like, cryo... Um, I think, like, cryo mines or something. Or there's at least some sort of mine. I don't want to step on them. Yeah. I, I like the way they didn't just treat Eisenhorn as just, like, you know... The gr the good guy. He actually has a lot of regret and a lot of angst and stuff. But he essentially got, always says, well, he's pretty much going to say it on this part here. He goes, you know what? I could have done something here, but um, I needed to crack on with my job. And I live with that and I'll deal with it. And I did it because that was the right thing to do in the long run. Blah, blah, blah. Praise be the emperor of mankind and all of that. Because, you know, I space hesitated. brains and, and pretty much the, the entire Imperium are uh, a bit everything. fascist in certain ways. Uh, it also the depends on like, which law you read, but the earlier it is, uh, the uh, the darker it is. So that's uh, some some sort of cryo, uh, some person just come out of a cryopod and uh, they're dying. And he's having a little look around thinking, shall I shall I kill the person or shall I shall I leave them? Uh, and he decides that actually, no, no, I think I'll just I think I'll just leave it. And did I did I leave the gas on? That, that's what the narration was all about. All right, come on, yes, yes. You can have your you can have your epiphany later, mate. I, I just need to crack on and killing the guy. Can I crack on and kill the guy? I don't think I can crack on and kill the guy. I'm gonna press space just to skip it. So there we go. Keep moving on, and then back through here, and then we're gonna get these essential cryo zombies that are wandering around. Don't get too close because I think they can actually hit you. Uh, we can change. What's this here? We can. Oh yes, we can change his equipment here, but we don't have any equipment to change to. So, essentially checkpoint. Um, it does feel sometimes like a lot of this has been reused, a lot of the locations you're going to, because, well, it's essentially, it is just, you know, it's 40k uh, generic panels, which is grunge followed by dirt with a bit of blood on top. Apparently that person is bleeding oil, which is um, an interesting one. So we're going to go on here and then up top. So I wonder if we're actually going to get to murder people up here. Hmm. Not murder, sorry, not murder. Um, um, dispense some some justice and, and stuff. They could have really done this like a like a sort of Judge Dread type game as well, but uh, don't know why they didn't. Now that does look cool. That's ah, pretty good. That's um generic generic 40k lost technology type thing where we don't really know what's going on and it's a bit iffy. We will have a quick read of the data slate and there you go. You can pause that if you really want to actually read that. And now we have to actually kill these people here. So. Um, we can go into this mode here where you can pretty much go into, it's, it's not a quick time mode, it's like a pause mode where you can um, sort of pick up different combos and things like that. That's actually ammo that he's dropped, so I'm going to sort of roll back, pick this up, and I'm just going to blast his face off because I can. Bang! There you go. Job done. I really wish the sounds were a bit more, like, impactful. If you play Space Marine, it's actually not a great game, I don't think, the Space Marine game, because it's essentially just a fairly average corridor shooter but what it did amazingly well and has never no, I don't think anything has really come close to it maybe maybe um, Eternal Crusade is, is getting close to it now but the the kinetic energy of behind a space marine and how big and honking the weapons are and just the way they sound and things like that is really really cool this is going to do a bit more story about um this thing here and what's happened and blah 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 and i'm going to skip that and you know what i'm going to actually leave it there i'm going to cut this short because essentially all i'm going to do is keep wandering around corridors and then have a big boss fight at the end which um if i lose i can just restart and if i win then um the story continues either way that is um a bit of Eisenhorn Xenos. It is, as far as I can tell, fairly mediocre. Some would call it absolute garbage. Some would call it really good. I don't know where you stand on it. I think, as I said, it's about in the middle. It's 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 very rough around the edges. The combat's not bad. It does nail like the look of it fairly well, and the story is good. 
be, well, assuming it follows the story of the book. But um, it's going to be interesting for some people. Uh, if you're, like I say, looking for just the story, then just read the book. If you're looking for amazing, awesome 40k gameplay, you're probably not going to find it here. If you don't mind, uh, you know, checking this out and having a bit of both, then there you go. Um, in terms of price, I think it's about a tenner, um, probably a little bit overpriced. But you know what? I don't really normally judge on price. It's completely up to you what you want to pay for these things. If you think 40 quid is worth it, then that's up to you. It's your money. You can spend it how you want. I'm not going to judge. As always, though, links in the description so you can check it out yourself. Thanks very much for watching. Take care and generic partings.